Uh, I don't know what's going on. What is going on? I don't know. Something's going on. Uh, something, 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 something. I'm gonna edit this out so bloody hard. Yes. Here we are. Hi everyone and welcome back to another installment in the All What series. And to start off, just to um, address some issues, well not issues, just points. Um, I'm still getting myself familiarized with the uh, software that I need to use for the uh, live stream. So I may do a test stream uh, this Sunday, but I don't think that will be online. Um, or at least accessible for everyone, but I am gonna do a live stream um, Sunday the 3rd at I think 1 o'clock, but I'm gonna post it on Facebook So if you guys uh, uh, Keep an eye out with, for that announcement you uh, you should be okay, and that's 1 o'clock Amsterdam time So that's GMT plus 1 I think but then we're gonna do a live stream for, I don't know, one and a half, maybe two hours of me playing Dark Souls Online. Um, yeah, in the meantime, just before I started recording, I did some uh, soul farming. Um, let me show you guys. I have quite some souls right now, you can see it in the uh, in the uh, bottom corner. Um, and I need those souls to wrap up Yuria's questline. Um, me attacking her caused the Elonor Pale Shades to invade us in uh, Farron Keep, and he will invade us once again here in uh, Irithyll Valley. Irithyll Valley. Irithyll the Boreal Valley. Durr. Um But attacking NPCs in this game, you, you have uh, an unseen sin counter, so I have seen it in this game. Um, so in order to get back on Yuria's good side, I need to request uh, Absolution. And that does come at a hefty uh, soul price. And I want to look cool again, not not all beef jerky like I'm now. So I need to uh, heal my dark sigils. And that also is pretty pricey, mainly because you uh, the game handles it like you have to pay back like those free levels you have, and it doesn't take into account the uh, soul level. Um, you got those levels? No, it just takes your current soul level into uh, into into account. So I I do need some souls for that. And I am gonna go eventually. Uh, Switch is built a bit around. Um, apparently, people do like the idea of me going full on faith. So um, I'm gonna put some points from strength and put them into faith and one point of intelligence is, is gonna go into faith at some point uh, trouble is if I do that you can do that at the uh, at the Rosario's fingers covenant uh, yeah there just just deliver a pill tone and you can uh, switch around your uh, or rearrange your stats a bit um, then I would automatically fill um, the rest of uh, Cyrus's quest line, and I, I would like to wrap that up. Not in the least because you can get a really, really good-looking shield as part of that quest line. So I'm gonna wrap that up first. I'm gonna do that one first. Um, so that means that from here on out, I will continue to the next area um, and do do everything in my power to uh, be able to uh, switch to a full faith build as soon as possible. So, there you have it, people. Awesome. Um, while I did the soul farming, I did it at uh, Farron Key Perimeter. So, um, I got some Pilton drops from the uh, Dark Raid. I got some Wolf Blood Sword Cross drops from the Gru. Um, and I may or may not, in between episodes, go ahead and farm these just to show you guys the items you can get from those respective covenants. Um, I also was summoned two times, so I got two extra proof of uh, Conquered Kept, and one of those times I defeated a... Uh, dang it, I, I forgot what the, what the government is called. Uh, someone from the, the, the... where is it? Uh, I am an idiot. Ooh, there goes your counter. Ding! That's one. 
the Mount Makers, yeah. I defeated the Mount Maker. Um, and if you defeat a Mount Maker, uh, you not only get Proof of Concord kept, you also get a Virtual Shackle. And I don't think I'm gonna gonna farm these because that's that's a real chore. But hey, we we have um, only 22 more Proof of Concord kept to go, so we are getting there slowly. And here we have a sewer full of centipedes. I don't like centipedes. That is one. And here we have another. Alright, just some dunk pies so you can uh, throw these at people to toxic them. Just be aware that it also builds up your own uh, toxic meter. So uh, be prepared if you plan on using that. <laughs> Alright, more dunk pies. Yay! There we go! Um, nothing to see here. However, if you uh, fill Krarat's questline, like I mentioned in the previous episode, uh, he goes scrounging for items in this area once you reach it, and you give him permission to do so. Um, there are some um, uh, factors that decide if he uh, succeeds or if he fails. If he fails, then you will find his corpse and his ashes right near these three sewer centipedes. But luckily I know how to save him. Alright, here we find the <laughs> excrement covered ashes. Oh man, why did we pick that up? Really? Yeah, excrement covered ashes. Uh. Alright. <laughs> Shrine and made him prepare new items. Perhaps. Unclean umbral ash cut it with excrement. Perhaps it's possible the handmaiden, the handmade of Firelink Shrine, could turn these into a few new things. Oh, to savor the sweet pungency, but once more. Mm, no, thank you. That's not cool. It's gross. Actually, kind of. Nah. But look, it's my big friends. Oh, look at this. This is onion, bro. Now. I know not all of you like onions, but I do, and I like this one in particular. He's just an epic dude. Just look at him. Look at him. He's just sleeping in the middle of everything of the freaking boreal valley. Man, I wish I I could fall asleep as easily as, as he could. Really. Excuse me, I I must have dozed off. Well, it still begs the question. You know. The last time we saw him, he was stuck in a well, and we threw his armor down there, and he managed to get out oh, in his armor. I seem to have my chance. Really? I, Siegfried of Katarina, offer my deepest gratitude and a little surprise to go with it. It's all yours. All right, sweet miracle. I know. Won't you join me for dinner? I make a fine Esther soup. I've got some stewing right now. Even we undead deserve a little normalcy from time to time. And finally, upon this rendezvous, let us make a toast. To your valor, my sword, and our sworn duties. Long may the sun shine. Ah oh, yes, praise the sun. <laughs> Have you heard? Somewhere, hidden right here in Irithil, is a deep dungeon. And even below that, the profaned capital, home of Yorm, the reclusive giant lord. That reminds me, I have a great... Yeah, and there we pretty much have one of my dilemmas, because I want to be able to switch my build um, as soon as possible, but that requires me to go into the opposite direction of... Uh, Erythil Dungeon, and in Erythil Dungeon, um, and the Profane Capital at that, there is an NPC that allows us to uh, purchase the uh, Dark Miracles, and I'm actually really interested in that. Uh, there are some really nice buffs, buffs you can get from her, just some utility spells. 
So I may or may not do that as fast as possible before I go ahead and switch to the full on faith build. It's only four points or five points that should go into faith as my build is right now, I think. Um, also, I'm not really familiar with the best weapons for faith, so I might just uh, put more points from strength into faith. Um, there, there are some weapons I, I do have in mind to use, but I'm not really sure, so we will see, we will see. I'm afraid I've cast a cloud over things. Well, I'm going to have myself a little nap. The only thing to do, really, after a nice toast. <laughs> and just like that, he's asleep again. Really? Alright, so if you have uh, saved uh, Onion Bro from his well, he will help out uh, Gryrot during his outings here in Irithyll. If you did not save uh, 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 this guy, um, Siegbert, then you need to not have bought his armor set from uh, Patches, and you need to tell Patches that um, Gryrot is here in Irithyll, then he will go after him and save him. So. Either of these two things, make sure that Grarod survives um, his trip here to Irithyll. So if, if you cock that up, he will die and you will miss out on some items. Um, of course if you find him here, you can find his ashes, you can take him to the handmaiden and uh, she will add the items that he sold to her inventory, as well as the items that he uh, would have sold if he were to come back alive from Irithyll. However, he will go away a third time. And those items you will miss out permanently. So there's that. Um, Alright, let's continue here in Irithyll. We are on our way to... Um, get evaded by the Lumber Pale Shade again, so we can wrap up Yuria's questline. Alright, now I'm gonna... Uh, see if I can pull that guy over there. Alright, I still have my stuff here I kept for, my, uh, for me being summoned. There we go. Uh, these. All right, so that guy is staring at the painting. Let's have a better look at him, shall we? Um, so we've met the um, um, Black Knights, and I've already told um, they harken back to the days that Lord uh, Gwyn went off to fight the demons, and he took some of his silver knights with him. Uh, they were not successful, and his surviving silver knights from that skirmish were scarred black and so came the black knight so well this is a silver knight and the reason why i'm not just waltzing up to him is because well that guy with a bow and i'm not too keen to be snapped in my back so let's just draw this guy over here there we go they have not the same heavy weapons as, uh, oh, there we go, as the Black Knights, but they can buff their weapons with, um, what's it called, lightning. So, don't be fooled by their smaller weapons, their damage output can be quite gross. Uh, just like Sil uh, Black Knights, they do drop their uh, armor set. These guys, Silver Knights, they also drop... Uh, regular titanite charge, large titanite charge, and this one in particular has um, always drops a divine blessing. He does not respawn, by the way. Neither does the guy upstairs. All right, let's go, let's go and uh, teach that guy a lesson, and then we'll take a look at those paintings. All right, there we go. And there's also one with a sword up here. So let's just be careful not to get cocked by a stupid arrow.
There we go. See, large titan and charge. Nice. And I'm gonna need those if I'm gonna switch uh, switch builds. Uh, gonna need some new weapons. Alright. If you um, stay here, you can see the the bowman over there. He will lose interest, and then you can just walk up to him, sneak up, and uh, stab him in the back. There we go. Also, be careful with these uh, with these faces. If you break them, um, you will get some frost build up. There we go. All right, there are some items upstairs, and I will go grab them in a minute. But for now, let's take a look at these paintings, because these are actually quite important. Now here, this is this is the player from Dark Souls 1. Or at least, it, it looks like uh, an elite knight, the same armor set that Henri wears. And... The, the painting of Ariamis, it was all frozen over, and this so this seems to be a bit of the painting of uh, Ariamis. And later on, near uh, this area, we can actually find the armor set of the dudes in Dark Souls 1 that were charged with protecting this painting, making sure that nothing escaped. Now, over there... Right, let's... That looks to me like the uh, Grand Archives from Dark Souls 1. It's an area near uh, Einar Londo. And that's the place where you could find uh, Seath the Scalus. One of the uh, holders of the Lord Souls. He, wa he was the uh, bearer of um, a bit of Lord Gwyn's Lord Soul. All right. This is Nashandra, the, the big bad of uh, Dark Souls 2. And remember when I talked about um, the Dark Souls 1 DLC with uh, the Abyss and um, Manus, who was thought to be uh, a degenerate version of the Fred of Pygmy? Well, he's not, by the way. But once you kill him in Dark Souls 2, you find out that some shards of his soul actually survive. And Alexandra is one of these shards of the Abyss. And there are actually more in Dark Souls 2, and there's actually one in Dark Souls 3, and we will meet her uh, at some point. This is uh, the Throne of Wands. Uh, Dark Souls 2 did mix up things a little bit. And instead of linking the fire explicitly, you could cho uh, choose to uh, ascend the Throne of Wands, and that was akin to linking the fire. Now, that is an Orlando. And... One of the most annoying bits. There was this um, this is in infamous uh, uh, part of Einar Londo where you had to go up on one of the ramparts, and there were some of these silver knights just taking pot shots at you, and it was really really hard because uh, once you uh, reach the end of the rampart, we bring someone. Once you re reach the end of the rampart, um, you find yourself on a ledge. With two archers on both sides of you. So it's quite a difficult fight. And quite difficult to get by them. And the easiest way. And that's saying something. Is stand on the. Just outside of the reach of the archers. And shoot poison arrows at them. Are we gonna do this? Oh, this guy has Gil's sword. Alright, you do have my respect. Oh, I don't know what's happening. I'm gonna cut this out. But... Uh... Really, cool.
Alright, so what happened is I accidentally uh, pushed a stupid button combination and um, I, I changed tabs and when I got back into the game um, I couldn't interact directly with the game itself because there was a stupid pop-up screen from Steam. Um, so I died ingloriously. <clears throat> yeah, I really am an idiot and ding, counter goes up to two. Alright, um, last painting. Um, this is really meme This is this is uh, uh, Guinevere, uh, daughter of Lord Gwyn, and she has an infamous chest. Gee, wonder what this comment is gonna say. Praise the chest. Very good Dark Souls players. Very good Dark Souls community. Very mature. But um, yeah, I guess. Um, the silver knight that was standing here was just as enticed as probably a lot of players were. Anyway, let's go back up and there are some items we can pick up. And allow me to demonstrate that these things contain frost stuff. There we go. Alright, another defined blessing. <laughs> Smoke's Great Hammer and the Leo Ring. Right, so one of the most infamous boss fights in, in Dark Souls 1 is against Ornstein and Smo, And we are being summoned again. Good God. Oh, no. Oh, apparently it's shredded out. Um, which was basically just two dudes with separate health bars against you, the player. And after you've killed one, the other would absorb the uh, fallen one and be stronger. And also refill their own health bar. So, kind of a difficult fight. Anyway, oh, right, I should take a look at this one. Um, I already talked about Force Grid Shockwave so around you. Yeah, there we go, something about to time out. Uh, this is the ranged version of it. Release a Shockwave in front. The people of lands known for festivity and drink are typically outspoken. One can be sure that they will not bottle their emotions, instead venting anger and the like with confidence. This is basically just force push. Alright, we picked up a Smo's hammer. Twisted great hammer associated with Smo. The last knight to remain at his post guarding the ruined cathedral. Restore HP while attacking a carryover from Smo's past as an executioner. Right, so... Uh, there were four elite knights in Dark Souls 1, and only one you had to fight, or only one you actually met, uh, if you just stuck to the main game. And that was uh, Lion Knight uh, Ornstein. And Smo was actually an aspiring knight. However, he was, uh, yeah, he was the executioner of Enerlando, but he had the habit of eating his victims. He was a cannibal. So, a bit frowned upon. And as such, he wasn't accepted into the knights. But this item description um, does indicate that at some point between Dark Souls 1 and the current events, he actually made it to knighthood. Alright, we also got the uh, Leo Ring, which is the, the ring associated with. Um, there we go. With. Ornstein, Dragonslayer Ornstein, one of the four knights of Gwyn, the first lord. Strengthens thrust weapon counterattacks, and it does quite a bit of bit of more damage. It was it's really nice if you go with uh, spears or uh, um, rapiers or something. Ornstein was the first knight of the sun's eldest born, and his cross spear is said to have pierced scales made of stone, and that refers to the uh, stone dragons. He was a dragonslayer after all. And every knight is associated with a, um, with, or, yeah, um, it is said that one of, uh, let's try that again, shall we? Ooh, we, are, we are again being summoned. It is said that, um, pretty much every knight is associated with, a uh, part of Quinn's family. I don't know how I haven't delved into that lore, but the eldest son of Lord Quinn. 
he was expunged from the oh. He was expelled from the um, uh, Records of Time because he sided with the dragons actually. He betrayed his own family uh, to fight alongside the side of the dragons. So, there is no name known uh, by which the Elder Sun goes. We know the names of uh, Guinevere, we know the name of uh, Gwendolyn, but we do not know the name of his Elder Sun. Is there something here? No, there's not. Alright, so we are about to get to the part where uh, we can fight the Londor Pilshed for the second time. And then we will be able to heal our Dark Sigil. So I'm actually looking forward to that. And of course dogs, because, well, dogs. Yeah, one of those. Invisible slave dudes firing charge results. Really mature, dude. Really mature. Thank you. Just can't you just come here and fight me like a man? No? Okay, then I'll come to you. And of course, more dogs. I said more dogs. Oh, oh, oh. We are being summoned once more. It's timing out again. Good. Well, that's one dog. And there should be two more up there. There we go. And another sorcerer. Alright, this is the last doggo. And now that we've cleared the area, it is time. Oh, Dark Shadows are nice. To get invaded once more by the Londor Pill Shade. Alright, time to pop an ember. There we go, ammo restored. Let's see. Ah, there we go. And there he is. Ooh, that does quite a bit of damage. So, the main thing that um, his build suffers from is a lack of range, but I guess those uh, Dark Sorceries does medicate it somewhat. But still, those claws, you really need to be in someone's face just to be able to reach them. And there we go. We did it! We did it! Now we can finally wrap up that stupid bloody quest line and get ahead of our lives. Alright, I'm just just this is a shortcut. Alright. The shortcuts to um, the Church of Yor Yorska. We've been here. Um, but I am actually just going to do the full round and make sure that I don't have to deal with these stupid duckers here again. <sighs> and I think it's a shame that I really do not like the duckers in this in this game. Um, I'm a fan of dogs. Dogs are epic. Um, my parents have a dog. Well, that's not a dog I like, but I mean, I had this. Uh, conversation last with some of my friends and we were like yeah dogs are epic and we were looking at pictures of mastiffs and other big huge dogs and it was all it we, we were like yeah uh, we were I, I just I don't know that sentence somewhere went horribly wrong and I don't know what happens 
Anyway, um, we were at this establishment, um, and there was some kind of party going, and there was this one guy with his dog, and it was a really, really cute dog. Um, so we were like, yeah, dogs are awesome. And those are two guys I know from um, my time at university. Uh, one of them works in uh, Britain nowadays. So every opportunity we have, we, uh, we go out for drinks. So every time he's back in the Netherlands, and, uh, you know, he gives us a call and we go out for drinks or something. that trouble just for some blue buff pellets. Oh, that was not the last of them. Shame on you sneaking up on me. I never would do that. I'm honorable. No, I'm not. Alright. There we go. Solo for Wary Warrior. And let's heal ourselves. There we go. Got with the scythe. Oh. There we go. Down with you. Shame on you. Alright, as you can see by the uh, sheer amount of summon signs here. Oh, we are being summoned again. That is the boss fight of the area. But first, we are going to see if we can help as a blue spirit. And three, two, one. Nicole's long screen. Yay! Alright. All oh, right, I, I do not trust that at all. And I do not like the way that place is looking. That's the weapon you get by um by killing Vort. Oh, that's not trade off here. I don't think I'm the one to win that. But he did get a first hit in, and I'm being oh no 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 don't like that, like at all, frostbitten. Ah. I'm totally not familiar with this weapon. Or with his weapon. I never used great maces in my life. All right. He does have some significant delays between attacks, so. Well, there we go. Nice. Um, there is. Actually, a saying among Dark Souls uh, PvPers that whoever attacks first is the one who loses, um, and I guess that's true, especially if you are not really familiar with uh, the move set of all the weapons, because you give away the first hint at your move sets. Um, for example, right now, I guess 
his damage output and his reach were far greater than mine, but by paying attention to the delays between his attacks, he is a slow weapon, I was able to get in there and finish the job. And I do think that actually is kind of cool of me. Oh, I'm gonna pat myself on the back. Look at this. I'm patting myself on the back. That's right. Alright, two invisible dudes. Here. That is one. And that is two. And I'm And look, we are again back near the Cathedral of Yorshka. The Church of Yorshka. And it seems that the big posse here already left. I'm a fan of that. Now, I can make that drop safely, as it were. There we go. And here we find the Ring of the Sun's Firstborn, the Nameless One. He who shall not be named. And a stupid fire witch. Again. Man, you really are too fond of me. Alright. Alright, time to cure ourselves of our hollowing. And look good again. Oh, yes, and before we forget, um, you guys remember that I mentioned this is a pilgrim, a camouflage pilgrim, um, that I should totally not forget to kill. Because if you let that pilgrim kill, and if you are on... What was I going to say? On the uh, good side of Yuria, then the pilgrim will kill Henri and prep Henri as your bride or groom, depending on the gender of your character. But I don't want to marry Henri. I really don't. Not interested, no, thank you. Alright, let's go down here and uh, do our stuff. In the meantime, we picked up a nice ring. And that is an integral part of our faith build. Here, Ring of the Sun's Firstborn. Greatly boosts miracles. The Sun's Firstborn was once a god of war, until he was stripped of his stature as punishment for his foolishness. And his foolishness was siding with the everlasting dragons instead of with his family. Uh, no wonder his fairy name has slipped from the annals of history. Alright, so now we have... Morn's Ring, which boosts miracles, and the Ring of Lessons Firstborn, which greatly boosts miracles. Um, if I recall correctly, this boosts damage output of miracles by like 12%, and this 20%, so together it's like a 32% increase of damage. That's really, really nice if you're doing a faith build. Alright. Here we can uh, request absolution. Your sins will be forgiven for a lot of souls. Sure. We are cleansed of sin. Um, let's do this the quick way. So now we can walk up uh, to Yuri again. She will not attack us. We will be uh, friends once more. Okay, there we go. See? She doesn't attack us anymore. And we are... Back in our favor. For now. For now, that is. And here. Ha! The pale shade set. Uh, attire worn by those who kill in the name of the Sable Church of Londor, uh, of which Yuria is 
one of the three leaders. Uh, the pale shades of the Sable Church are all undying hollows, given rise to much fear and contempt. Their fight is one of neither honor nor exaltation, yielding nothing but withered moans. Well, that sounds very, very convivial. All right. Are there any things that I need to buy from you? I do not think so. Nothing I'm particularly interested in. So I'm not gonna. Till we meet again. But we are gonna go ahead and cure our uh, Dark Sigil. And thereby fill Yuria's questline. If you do that. And you are still interested in the items that Yuria has. You can just go ahead and kill her. Without any consequence. And deliver her ashes to the uh, Shrine Handmaiden. And then she will sell you uh, stuff that you already had. Alright. Hollowing reversed. The Dark Sigil has been healed. Alright. We should celebrate that, don't you think? Nice. All right. See if we can level up a bit as well. Speak thine heart's desire. Put some points into faith. Then touch the darkness within me. Take nourishment from these sovereignless souls. There we go. We can put two points in faith. That seems fine. Actually, before I do that, um, there is this one weapon I have in mind to use as a pure faith build, or more or less a pure faith build, and that is Wolnir's Holy Sword. Let's take a look, shall we? Because we got Wolnir's soul, and now we can make a weapon out of it. Um, let's see, there are two things you can make out of uh, the soul of High Lord Wolnir. The first is this Pyromancy Black Serpent, which is really nice if you are pursuing a Pyromancy build. Um, Releases undulating black flames that trace the ground. Be it sorcery or pyromancy, all techniques that infringe on humanity lead to the same place. Uh, that is to say, they all seek out will of their own. Pyromancy discovered from the abyss by High Lord Wolnir that inspired the black arts of Grave War. So this is a dark, dark pyromancy. But I'm looking at this weapon. Wolnir's Holy Sword. A holy sword eroded by the abyss. When Wolnir fell to the abyss, he was gripped by a fear of true darkness and pleaded to the gods for the first time. This holy sword, together with three armlets stripped from courses of clerics, gave him some semblance of comfort. So this weapon and those three armlets uh, allowed him to sustain himself in the abyss. It also has a really nice weapon. I'm just gonna buy this. It's zero souls. It's fine. Treat the firekeeper not with discourtesy. She is much like. You know, I'm gonna take your word for that. I'm, I believe you completely. And I will treat her correctly. Alright, so we have Volnir's Holy Sword right here. Uh, it doesn't have the greatest moveset. This is just general stuff. Heavy attack is not a thrust, it's actually just the uh, Bossed Sword. So. Uh, moves out. But then again, it's still a great sword, and I like great swords, so that's fine. It does have an epic, uh, epic weapon arc, like one guy it is really, really slow, as you can see. It doesn't grant you any, uh, any form of poise, so if you are, you are easily interrupted. But if you can catch uh, like a PvP or by surprise, you don't have like uh, something like force equipped or something, you can just walk up behind them and go like, Bon guy, and you know like throw them off a cliff or something. So let's uh, let's put some uh, reinforcement into this weapon and see what the uh, damage output is compared to a claymore. Let's see, there it is. 
Oh, that's not skill. Hmm. Let's see. We can get it to plus two. And if I just go ahead, I've never actually used a boss weapon before quite extensively. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's let's take a look, shall we? Oh, well, there, there we go. So, two hundred and sixty-five versus two eighty-two. Hmm. Hmm. Now, this weapon does skill with fate, uh, with fate. Uh, and strength. Let's see what happens if we put some points into faith and um, what that does for our damage up compared to the heavy claymore. Take nourishment from these sovereignless souls. All right, so this goes up to 269 versus 283, a bit lower. But I wager that if we transfer some souls from strength and the one point from intelligence to faith. Then the attack power might just be comparable, or even better. Hmm. So for now, I'm just gonna stick with the uh, with the claimer. Uh, no, nope, we are gonna do this. Farewell, Ashen One. May the flames guide thee. All right, let's go. Oh, by the way, once you uh, heal your Dark Sigil or kill the uh, the Camouflage Pilgrim, she will not attack you on sight, but she will be like, Oh no, you're not a good person anymore, I don't like you, go away. And I'm okay with that. No, I don't like you, Yoria. I don't like you at all. You're not a fish. And I bet some people w watching this are like, what does he mean with that? And I'm like, I don't care. I'm making statements. I'm making, I'm making just things up as I go. All right. Time to kill that stupid pilgrim. And uncap our uh, holy sword. I'm gonna get there. All right, here we go. All right, and we pick up the sorcery chameleon. And chameleon, what that does, basically the same as those. Uh, 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 oh, we are being some. I said white branch and shit. It turns you into an object um, that. Um, can be found in the air, general area you're in, so you could be turned into one of these statues or something else. But it does allow you to blend in. Mind you, you are not indistinguishable. You can still be spotted. And why? Oh, why am I summoned here? Really? Alright, not too pleased. I'm just gonna ignore you guys. Now, yeah, why did I have that? Go. Alright, let's see if we can help the host out. And we can! Go gang squad! But hey, we did get a proof of concord out of it. But that's number 9, 21 to go. We are gonna get there, eventually.
All right. So as I was saying, uh, it ju the the sorcery just acts like a uh, young white bronze. Um, so you could get turned into one of these statues. You could get turned into a chair. You will not be completely indistinguishable. Um, because your coloration will be a bit off. And for example, if you're embered like me, you will still see all those little uh, bit, bits of cinder, you know, coming off your uh, character. And if you have something else that produces an aura of some sort, that will also still be visible. So, for example, if you just consume into a green blossom or something like this, then even if you transform into a chair or a statue, you, you will st still see this green glow. And we are being... Ooh. Apparently it's rush hour. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Ooh. Look at this. We are in Aerithil, actually. And we are once again ganking on an invader. You know... Alright, I should probably go ahead and equip these Undead Hunter Charms. Uh, sorry if I go silent, but I'm just really concentrating because uh, I, w I would hate to die more on or something. Alright, so he just lost connection or something? Something just happens. I'm not sure what it is. Apparently just like a connection. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're not having that.
But we were having that. Alright. We did try, we did try. I totally forgot to equip my stupid hats. Oh, it's hat time. No, I just pulled my own hair. Yay. Um, hat time. Because we look human again. Yay. All right. I'm just gonna do this. All right. I'm not interested in you guys. I'm just gonna ignore you. I'm not going to ignore you because you're just going to follow me upstairs and I'm not having that. Where did these are going to go? Hmm. Alright. Don't care. Uh, huh. There we go. Let's also dispatch that guy. Oh. Summoned once again? Holy... Cow. I was gonna say something else entirely, but... Let's not go with that, shall we? We're gonna be a faithful, we should be. <clears throat> faithful, I get nothing. And we are back here. But... Different guy. Yeah, and that's just mocking us. Oh, I'm gonna bury you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know what I think of this. Maybe you should just go ahead and find out. Are they following us? They are. Hey. Yeah. All right. Methinks we can have an honorable duel in a bit, so let's just uh, go ahead and uh, keep this. <gasps> no, that's Sudoku heal. That's not fair, Sudoku. Sudoku, Sudoku. Whatever your real name is. Alright, let's just enjoy the show. Um, man! That was kind of interesting who, who between me and that Inferno would win. I think she would win. But it would have been fun. Like a nice duel or something. Not yeah, then Siduki had to step in. Actually. I think it would be fun if you lost right there. I mean, that's what you get for invading. Oh, uh, well, invading. Not invading. Uh, intruding on someone else's fight. Anyway, um, boss fight here. Pont of Sullivan. He is nasty. His first phase is not so much. His second phase is really, really annoying. So I am gonna summon for him. And I 
can summon uh, Gotthard. I can summon Henri. And if you are on Uriah's good side, you can also summon the Londor Pill Shade right here. I'm just gonna go with uh, with Gotthard and see if we can do this. Let's see. Hm, I'm at full HP again. Yay! Probably gonna need not need those. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. But I will probably set my sword on fire. You can parry this guy, but I really suck at parrying, so I'm not gonna do that. And I should be able to dodge that, but I didn't for some reason. Dang it. Let's just quickly get on the shield. There we go. Okay. This is not a good start. Like, not at all. Alright, it's time to face two deaths. I was like, let's, you know, get out of the way of that, but... <sighs> oh, wait, where, 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 where? This is his phase two, and in phase two he will summon, like, a phantom version of himself. And that will also attack... ...like he does. Nope. Now you can, of course, go ahead and kill the Phantom, but that doesn't do anything because, well, he can just summon it back in again. Oh, stuff happening. And I'm about to lose my summon. This is not going well. Alright, time to get in there. And I was like, let's dodge that, and then I promptly didn't. Ugh. This is going to be uh, tricky. <sighs> no, no, no. Oh, lucky. Lucky. You bloody lot. I mean, without that stupid phantom, it's manageable. Let's get some damage in while we can. Oh. No, 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 no. Almost there. There we go. Whew. Huh. This is one of the bosses that I'm really, really bad at usually. Huh. Uh. We did it! Yay! So, Pontus of the Fun! Let's see what we can find out about him. Because... I mean, now that he is responsible for the Outrider uh, Knights, that he is... Um, responsible for the um, the formation of the Outrider Knights, that he is in general an unpleasant person. Um, he is from the painting and he serves Aldrich Saint of the Deep. 
What more can we find out about him? Let's just take a look at the soul. Let's, da, 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 there we go. Bold and Tiff Sullivan of Erethil imprisoned a god of the old royalty in the abandoned cathedral to be fed to the devourer. Alright, that, that, now that sounds ominous. Well, the devourer is obviously uh, Aldrich's Saint of the Deep. He imprisoned a god in there to be eaten by, by, by Aldrich. Well, that's that's a nasty end. That's a nasty way to go. Man. I don't want to imagine that. But, uh... Right. Two crystallizes here. There's almost no way to get them both. At least, I can't. Let's see if I can succeed. Here we... No. No. Just too slow. Uh, I think they both drop... Um, Think twinkling ties not so just reload the area or uh, you know go to Farling Shrine and back and uh, the other one is just back in place alright let's equip uh, the binoculars once more alright so that is the cathedral that the item description of uh, Sullivan Souls speaks of and there we will find Aldrich and the Deep, and we are being summoned once more. Ooh, nice. But that does mean that we will have uh, quite a bit, bit to go. But once I am past Aldrich, I can wrap up Ceres' questline and we can go uh, full faith. And that was kind of anticlimactic. Huh. Alright, so let's go back to Farling Shrine. Yeah, I should mention um, this is a really hot PvP uh, uh, um, area because just like you have the uh, Watchstocks of Farron in um, Farron Keep, you also have the Altered Faithful Covenants uh, just past Pont of Sullivan. So you just kill the boss, you are embered, because when, if you kill a boss you are automatically embered. And there is always someone online there to invade you, so there is quite some activity. And also the uh, place where we just found found the uh, crystal lizards, that's also a um, dueling ground. So people uh, leave their summon signs behind there just to uh, just duel, it's a really nice spot for duels. But... Desire. Well, be careful. Don't Very trip. Well. Then touch the darkness within me. Take nourishment from these sovereignless souls. Alright, we can pump this up to 25. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and put some points into a tomb and just to have more FP. Just to have more mana. Alright, let's check how the uh, Claymore and uh, the Holy Sword compare at this point. Alright, so 318 versus 294. And that's two handed, so one handed. We have 282 versus 271, which is getting closer. Mm. Alright. Oh, I really like the way how she twirls. Alright, um, that's all for this episode. So next, uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do in the next episode. I may go to uh, Irithal Dungeon just to get that NPC uh, free, but that's a rather lengthy path. So... I may just want to switch a build before that, and in that case, if I decide I want to do that, 
just go full on faith as fast as possible. Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go for all the Chain of the Deep and the Rep of Serious Questline so I can focus on.